Androgenic to anabolic ratios explained. Uh, this was a request. I uh, had a user comment it on... I'd plan on doing this anyway, so I needed some fodder for video, so I figured I'd dig into it a little bit. Um, um, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the, the ratios and ratings for anabolic to and, androgenic or androgenic to anabolic properties. Uh, before I do that, though, please take the time to uh, like my videos, subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot of people watching videos, not a lot of subscribers. <laughs> So I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. It motivates me to make more videos. And if you want to keep up what's going on with me, you can follow me um, on Instagram at Paul K. Barnett. All right, so let's dig into this. So first things first, um, you need to understand what um, androgenic properties and anabolic properties are. So androgenic is the masculinization effects of, of, a, of a steroid, body hair growth. Deep in voices, development, sex organs, aggression, libido, etc. Those are all things that are androgenic and enlargement of prostate, things like that. Uh, those are all things that would um, be considered androgenic properties. Um, anabolic properties are, you know, at a higher level, the muscle building nature of 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 the uh, steroid. You know, dig a little bit deeper into it it does you know a little bit more increased protein s synthesis improved body composition um increased bone remodeling increased muscle an anabolism um so establish that we'll we'll you know we'll dig into how these ratings are are how they're figured out um so determining the anabolic or androgenic to anabolic ratio um, the, the method used is called the uh, Hirschberger bioassay. The method compares the relative weights of the ventral prostate and the levator NA muscle of a male rat. So really what you're doing is comparing prostate tissue growth to muscle growth. All right. Um, the, the prostate growth is an indicator of the androgenic effect of the steroid. The muscle weight um, growth is an indicator of the anabolic effect of the steroid. Um, in in this testing method, it's been used since the 50s. There was a, you know, it it is considered the established method um, for evaluating these things. The control group of male rats are castrated and given um, no anabolic um, steroid treatment. The test group are also castrated, but they are given anabolic um, androgenic steroid, um, the substance that's being evaluated, you know, so they can compare the two. The prostate to muscle ratio for an AAS is calculated as the um, ratio of the prostate growth versus the muscle growth um, um, that the tested um, steroid produced. Um, untreated uh, rats are the baseline for the steroid. Um, when, when, for the math, for the ratios, testosterone is, is considered the base um, that all others are, are evaluated off of. So they, the testosterone has a one-to-one -one ratio. In practicality, testosterone does not exactly have a one-to-one -one ratio, but that's what, it's, what is used to evaluate the other um, substances. Um, they are scaled to testosterone. So let's take a look at some common ratings that we have here. Um, testosterone, as I said, one-to-one. -one. Um, D-ball um, has an androgenic rating of 40 to 60 and an anabolic rating of, of 90 to 210. There's variability in, in both. Equipoise is 50 and 100. Halo is 850 to 1900. Holy shit. <laughs> Nandrolone is 37 to 125. Trin is 500 to 500. Uh, Mint is 650 to 2300. Holy crap. Uh, Proviron is 30 to 50 to 100 to 150. Winstraw is 30 to 320. Um, Anivar is 24 to 322 to 630. Primavolin is 57 to 88. Anadrol is 45 to 320. 
So it sounds like everybody should be taking Halo and Mint, right? <laughs> if only that was true. I, you know, these I don't I don't read too much into these numbers. I'll be honest with you. Um, I mean, they they what 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 shows it up in rats is not working practicality in humans. You know, according to these numbers. Um, Proviron is more anabolic than Nandrolone, and we all know that's not true. Um, I, Nandrolone actually doesn't have that high of an anabolic rating comparatively to Tess, but uh, I find it to be one of the best um, AASs for, for for muscle growth. It just is. I use this as a guidepost and nothing more. I mean, Trin has a rating of 500 and 500, you know, in theory, it's five times more powerful than Tesla. It is pretty powerful. Um, so I just don't put a lot of... Don't read into these numbers too much. Don't... I, I would go with practical experience on these things. You know, like I said, they're a guidepost. But I, what happens in real life is not what these these things indicate. The ratings also don't account for the unique effects of the drugs. Like, you know, some might have suppression of cortisol... Um, you know, you know, the collagen growth with, with, with uh, with, uh, nandrolin that you don't get with other, other steroids, you know, there's, there's just stuff that that doesn't factor in it. it it's an over the oversimplification. I'll be honest with you. I find it to honestly be useless. So I wouldn't read too much into those ratings. Um, people, people get a boner for them. And I, I think you're just kind of wasting your time, uh, getting too focused on them. Anyway, that's my two cents. Take that for what it's worth. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, please, once again, please like and subscribe. If you have other videos you'd like me to make, I'm happy to do so. Um, you know, make suggestions. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Um, anyway, thank you for watching.